So this lecture will cover reading 21, which is long lived assets. The plan is we will talk about capitalizing versus expensing. So just I think a lot of this material you have seen in level one. All we do here is get a little <coughs> bit deeper. Uh, not much here that you've not seen before, but uh, as you can probably imagine, the difficulty level of the questions is more. So again, it's a refresher of the concepts and then your time needs to be spent practicing. Okay, uh, long-lived assets, this is property, plant, equipment, etc. Assets that will give you a benefit over a relatively long period of time. So in the first part, we'll talk about the capitalizing versus expensing decision. We'll then talk about depreciation, impairment and revaluation, some information about financial statement disclosures, and then <laughs> leasing. Okay, let's start with capitalizing versus expensing and this is a refresher of a basic concept if you buy an asset which is likely to give you economic benefit over multiple periods okay then what companies do is capitalize the asset and capitalizing an asset simply means that you are creating an asset so if you for example buy uh, uh, pens and pencils and spend say a few thousand dollars on that those pens and pencils are assets in a sense but they will be used in the period where you bought them so you just expense that on the other hand if you buy say uh, a machine that is creating your the stuff that you make that machine will be making stuff for the next five years so rather than just expensing the five million dollars on that machine you create an asset worth five million dollars the creation of that asset on your books is called capitalizing the asset. Now why do we do this? We do this because of the matching principle in accounting. The matching principle says that you want to match your expenses with the revenue that is created because of those expenses. So if you spend five million dollars today on a machine that will give you revenue over the next five years then the matching principle says that you should sort of recognize that expense over five years. In other words, you are spreading that expense over five years. And what is that spreading of the expense mechanism called? That is effectively depreciation. So depreciation is a mechanism for spreading your expense out so that your expense and your revenue match up. If you don't do this, then what will happen? the expense will come up to be very high in the year that you buy the machine and your profit will be very low in later years the profit will be high and so profit will be high expense will be low so so essentially it is the matching principle that we are using here and think of depreciation as the method for spreading out your expense Okay. As a general point, if you spend money on a machine and the future benefit is uncertain, then you should generally expense. Okay. So you capitalize when there is a future benefit and you are pretty sure there is a future benefit. Okay. So these are the principles based on which we will move forward. Again, if you recall from level one, the CFA Institute loves to ask questions comparing different scenarios. Generally, there are rules about whether a given asset should be capitalized or expensed, but often there is some flexibility companies have in deciding whether to capitalize or expense. And the sort of question that you will get on this is, two companies are identical, one is choosing to capitalize an asset, the other is choosing to expense. So just based on this accounting difference, should, be, should there be any meaningful difference in terms of your analysis? In, in other words, does one company become better than the other because of the choice of the accounting that they do? No, mm -hmm. economically they are similar. But will their financial statements look different? Yeah. They will look different. So as an analyst, we need to be able to look at those statements and then make adjustments so as to bring them to the same level. Okay, And we'll do this now through an example. So I think this example one in the curriculum is very helpful some of you who did level one more than two years ago will might remember this if you studied from the curriculum 
okay so we have two companies one is called cap and one is called now take a while guess which one capitalizes and which one expenses now okay so cap is the one that's capitalizing now is the one that is expensing so they start with thousand dollars cash uh, so essentially that is the equity so the initial balance sheet is cash is equal to thousand and equity is equal to thousand that's the simplest balance sheet you'll ever see okay so that's your starting point then in year one there is revenue of 1500 equipment purchased at the beginning of year one worth 900 other expenses for the year 500 and the company that capitalizes depreciates straight line over three years tax rate is 30 percent now we are going to look at the financial statement impact of both these companies where one company is capitalizing and the other company is expensing nothing too difficult here it's just that the conclusions will stick if you've seen an example so question one is which company reports higher net income over the three years so let's just go through this exercise okay on the left we have the capitalizing firm on the right we have the expensing firm so we can look at this uh, i won't spend too much time because i think it's obvious is there any difference in revenues for the two firms obviously not is there any difference in cash expenses yeah so so there is a difference in the sense that if the company that capitalizes they just show the regular cash expense of 500 and they show a depreciation expense of 300 okay this is in the we are looking at the income statement here what about the expensing firm why is this cash expense 1400 in the first year because the entire asset is shown as a expense in the remaining years we just have 500 and 500 so what is the income before tax in year one for the two firms okay so what's the income before tax over here so so the revenue is 1500 and the cash expense and depreciation is 800 so the income before tax is 700 over here what about over here over here it is only 100 and then you look at your 30 percent tax so you will what you will arrive at is in year one the net income is is 490 over here and what is it over here so here it is only 70 so an obvious conclusion but a capitalizing firm in the year that the asset is purchased will report a higher net income relative to the expensing firm what about in subsequent years in subsequent years the capitalizing firm will report lower net income why because of the <coughs> higher depreciation or the depreciation the other firm will not have any depreciation so the net income as well as the earnings before tax will be uh, will be higher what about operating profit ebit can we say the same about ebit hmm? yeah so same thing because ebit is uh, earnings before interest and taxes so that effectively in this example is like the income before tax so this is uh, ebit uh, what about ebit da yeah that will be the same so the operating and the EBITDA is a rough measure of operating cash flow which should be the same so just keep in mind a lot of people get confused by EBIT EBIT will be just like your income before tax there is no interest over here okay so this is an important distinction in the curriculum you can look at the exact numbers but this is fairly obvious okay another important point what happens to cash flow from operations okay so for the capitalizing firm that expense of 900 where does that hit yeah so the if you are capitalizing that means you are treating that as a machine as an investment so that will make your cfi or cash used in investing further down 
okay so the cfi for the capitalizing company will be lower relative to the cfi of the expensing what about the cfo okay cfo of the capitalizing firm will be higher because all that 900 is going towards reducing the cfo of the expensing so a company and this since the curriculum the cfa people try to connect many different things a company that wants to manage its its financial reports and it wants to show high cfo okay so if it wants to show high and i hope you know why companies like to show high cfo because that's what analysts are most interested in so a company that wants to show high cfo given a choice between putting your your uh, the money that you spend on the machine putting it either in investment or operations where would they rather put it they would put it rather in investment so that the cfo appears higher but what they are really supposed to do is figure out what the accounting rules dictate and and do that okay the uh, another general point in terms of the earnings over the 3 years okay so what what happens there so the earnings over the 3 years is the same so from a if you ask an accountant he will say that it effectively is the same but you if you ask a finance person what would he prefer now yeah uh, 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 a finance person would obviously prefer more cash now okay now again in this particular example in year 1 where is the cash flow higher for company the capitalizing company or the expensive company yeah, the why so let me just fazan why is it higher for the capitalizing company the cash why is the cash higher tax tax is the key you see depreciation itself is a and this is the critical item the depreciation itself is just a accounting number but what is the benefit of this depreciation what did that uh, what does that do that gives you a a tax uh, a tax benefit okay so another actually another important point here so in year 1 if you look at the if you look at the number so in general depreciation gives you a a tax shield but what is happening over here in year 1 who is paying more taxes uh, the capitalizing firm is going to pay more taxes so the capitalizing firm will have less cash flow is that obvious okay so uh, the only is cash is is tax a real cash flow is depreciation a real cash flow no okay so who is paying so other than other than taxes all other cash flows are the same for capitalizing firm and expensing firm okay the capitalizing firm will pay more taxes because it has a higher income before tax since they have a higher income before tax they will pay a higher tax since they are paying a higher tax their cash flow will be low okay so that's a critical point the remaining stuff on this just builds on that but that's only for year 1 only for year 1 okay i what i want you to do in the curriculum on this example just follow the numbers the point is that what i just said is for year 1 okay what about the impact on profitability ratios okay let's let's just look at say return on equity and net profit margin okay why is this return on equity on the left again we have the capitalizing firm and on the right we have the expensing firm what's return on equity what's the formula net income over equity depending on the book you are reading it can either be average equity or year end or beginning year equity so i think here we take the average equity so notice that the roe in year 1 is more for the capitalizing firm why is this so because the net income is much higher okay but in subsequent years 
then it is higher for the expensing firm because the depreciation cost is not shown in year 2 and 3 for the expensing firm okay and the same you will notice for net profit margin net profit margin for the capitalizing firm is 33% throughout what's the net profit margin net income over revenue so the net income is pretty stable because the cost has been spread out here we have net income that is very low net profit margin that's very low and then jumps up okay now in which firm do we have smoother earnings in, in, in the firm that capitalizes if you found this clip interesting and informative please visit my website www.rfirfanullah.com here you will find a tremendous amount of useful material right here in the 2011 CFA video lecture series you will find the entire level 1 curriculum for free and most of the material here is still relevant so this is worth looking at the 2012 video lecture series covers both level 1 and level 2 these lectures are available for a fee and uh, finally down here uh, financial management at IBA here you will find my lectures at IBA uh, for a course on financial management plus you'll find lots of useful spreadsheets that can help you with financial modeling so again please visit www.rfirfanullah.com thank you